Hey, what up everyone? I'm Cine Cool, and this is Jibs of War. And today I'm going to be going over the top 15 weapons in the game. This was brought to me by Angel. Angel is a new member, a puppet master, and when you become a puppet master, which is a tier 3 member, you get to request a video. So Angel had said, Hi Cine, how are you? Can you please make a video about what's the best weapon, in your opinion, to use in the game anytime you can? I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Thanks. Well, first of all, thank you for becoming a member. We all must pray. Uh, but uh, yeah, instead of doing that, which I will do that for you, I'm going to answer your question. But I'm going to do the top 15 weapons in the game. And actually, it's 16, so consider one of them an honorable mention. What I did is I went through every single weapon, and the ones that jumped out at me like they could not be left off the list, I wrote them down, ended up having 16 weapons, and I had to skip quite a few really good weapons. These are weapons that just jumped off the page. They had, they're like, they could not be left off the list. So you're, there's going to be some weapons on here that are left off that you're like, what the heck, but... It's because the other ones just jumped off the page at me, and they could not be left off the list. So let's get started here with the first one. They're in no particular order except for alphabetical. So I'm not putting them in any order, like, because weapons are... They're used in different situations and different teams. It's hard to say, like, what's the number one weapon in the game because one weapon that is used for a Skull Spam team would not be used for a Loopy team. You can't really do that with weapons because they're used in specific situations. Like, a weapon can't be the best weapon for every single team. So I'm just doing them in alphabetical order. These are the best 16 weapons in the game. If you see them in the Soul Forge, you should grab them and not leave the week without them. Or them a different way, you should go get them as soon as possible. So let's go with the very first first one which is celestial flask celestial flask create three potions of either blue green red yellow or purple and gain an extra turn so this one i think you have to get through the soul forge whenever it comes through a bright forest week um it had blessed you get to cause a random positive effect on yourself cleanse yourself give one mana to all allies yeah, so it has good uh, tempering as well. So the spell is awesome. What you do with this weapon is cast it, and then you get an extra turn. So usually any weapon with an extra turn is going to be on this list. This one has an extra turn. It's one of very few weapons that have an extra turn. There's probably three to five of them that have an extra turn on them. So they're going to make this list. That's one of the best things that you can have. So you cast that, you put all those potions on the board, you gain an extra turn, and then you have something ready to go like a Thrall or a Merilith or something that's going to blow up the whole board, and then you set off all those potions and get an extra turn and get like everybody up. So it's a really good weapon. You don't see me using it a ton, but I will use it here and there. It's really good. So it definitely makes the list. It jumped off the page. All right, what's the next one? One Don Bringer. So this one is Don Bringer slash Duskbringer. I didn't want to put them both on the list. They're really pretty similar. But Dawnbringer is the one that's better. And uh, get this one through the Soul Forge. You got to get a bunch of souls. You got to get a bunch of in ingredients, uh, other weapons you got to collect. And then you combine all those weapons together and make Dawnbringer. Uh, deal damage to all enemies boosted by yellow allies and enemies. Give all allies barrier. If there are 13 or more red gems, gain two magic. And then uh, it has destroy a random red gem, which is decent. It doesn't have great tempering. It's just the fact that it hits all enemies pretty hard. It boosts off if you have all yellow allies. And if there's any yellow enemies. And then it barriers your whole team. And if there's 13 or more red, gain 2 magic. So it's an OG weapon. It's old. Um, but it's still an oldie but a goodie. We we'll use it in like class events. You can use it in like world events. Any place where you just want to get stuff done quickly. Especially early on in events. It's still very useful. It used to be the best weapon for arena as well. But yeah, Dawnbringer slash Duskbringer make the list. All right, this one is another one where it's going to include many different weapons, but the Doomed Glaive is my favorite Doomed weapon. It's probably the best Doomed weapon in the game. You'll see it come through the Soul Forge. They cost like 900 diamonds. They're a little bit more expensive. Originally, you would get them in a Tower of Doom. It would be in the shop. You would buy up to the weapon in the shop, and that's when you would get this weapon. These were once some of the first weapons to come out when the Tower of Doom was first introduced. So now you're going to have to wait until a McGrim Woods week. It'll be in the Soul Forge for 900 diamonds. Deal damage to all enemies, plus one per tempering level. Convert brown gems to Doom Skulls. If the enemy has a Doom, create five more. Gain three mana for each green enemy. So super good. Um, drain two mana from green enemies. Create a leaf storm. 
Deal five damage to the second enemy. Entangle the first enemy. So it's an amazing weapon. It's probably the best doomed weapon in the entire game. It hits all enemies first with AOE damage. And then it does brown to doom skull. So then it's hitting stuff for skull damage. And then it's hitting... It's draining mana, creating a leaf storm, dealing damage to the second enemy, entangling the first enemy so they can't hit you back. It's just amazing. So Doomed Glaive definitely makes the list. And the other Doomed weapons are pretty good as well that are similar to this one. So Doomed Scythe, uh, Doomed Axe, Doomed Blade, Doomed Crossbow, and Doomed Club are the other ones. But Doomed Glaive is the best of all of those, so it has to make the list. Essence of Evil has to make the list. It jumped off the page at me. It's really good. Inflict all negative status effects on an enemy. Explode 42 gems of their mana color. So you're inflicting every single negative status effect on an enemy. So that's Entangle, Silence, all that stuff. Curse. It's everything. And then you're exploding a bunch of one of their col mana colors. Uh, hexed, 10% chance to transform the first enemy into a giant toad. Curse the first enemy. Steal two mana from the first enemy. 10% chance to summon a quasit. Eliminate two points of a random skill from the first enemy. You're just destroying that first enemy. And you have a 10% chance to summon. So it's amazing, especially when you're using it with like High King Iron Gut. Um, you can curse something and then devour it. Uh, even if you're just trying to make it through an event, and you need an explodey weapon that's also going to tie up the first enemy. Uh, this is really, really good. Essence of Evil can carry. Just win 250 wins with Plague Lord equipped. It's super. Go with Roan, equip Plague Lord, go to Explore 1, get 250 wins, and you get it for free. And it's an amazing weapon. So definitely everybody should have it. There's no reason you shouldn't have it. Fiend Fire. Deal damage to all enemies boosted by Damon allies, then curse and burn all enemies. Curse all enemies. Burn all enemies. That's pretty good. And it hits all enemies. So Fiendfire deserves a mention because of the curse. It curses all enemies. Steal one magic from the first enemy. Give all purple allies two mana. Drain three mana from the first enemy. 10% chance to summon a quasit. All that stuff too. And that one is the Diabolus class weapon, right? Blighted Lands, Diabolus. Diabolus also has Fire Blade. So if you're equipping Diabolus and with, with Fiend Fire, you can use Fire Blade, which is triple skull damage. And so you can burn all enemies, burn them, and then hit them with skulls for triple damage. Um, and the Curse. The Curse is really what it, what it is. Hitting all enemies is nice. The Curse all enemies is awesome. Burning all enemies with, with Fire Blade. It's another good uh, companion for High King Iron Gut. So Fiend Fire just had to be mentioned. It jumped off the page to me. A Jar of Eyes is a really good weapon. Explode 24 brown gems. Summon a random all-seeing eye troop. So just in a good explodey weapon. It's uh, blue and green. Um, 16 mana cost. It blows up a bunch of brown and summons an all-seeing eye troop. All-seeing eye troops are really good. If you had to go to a faction and rely upon four troops from a faction and have them all be good, no matter which one you summon, at least three of them are really good. And they're very uh, synergetic, too. So if you end up summoning a whole team of all-seeing eye, they'll actually work good together. Um, so really good summon there. Really good explodey weapon there. But on top of that, it creates an ice storm, and it uses blue. So normally you'll put this into like a blue team, and uh, it makes its own uh, storm. So really, really good weapon. I think it's the weapon for All-Seeing Eye. So whenever an All-Seeing Eye faction event comes around, you could buy up to it in the shop. Get it there. Order. This one jumped off the page at me. Had to put it on here. Life and death. Steal life from the last two enemies and death mark them, then bless myself. That's amazing. You're stealing life, so you're going to gain that. You're going to gain life. You're stealing it from them. It's true damage. So that's double good. True damage is awesome. But also you gain it. You steal it. You give it to yourself. And they're losing it. It's really good. And it hits hard. And death mark them. So if they survive, they get death marked. Then you bless yourself. That's amazing. It's a really good weapon. It deals five scatter damage. It's giving itself a bunch of life and enchanting itself. Death marking them and doing true damage to them. Pretty crazy. Drain three mana from the first enemy. So really good weapon. You should definitely get it. Silver Glade, that is the um, Underworld once again. I think Silver Necropolis. Silver Necropolis weapon, whenever that comes around on a Tuesday or a weekend, you buy up to it in the shop. You should definitely get this weapon. It's really good. It goes good with Arachnean Weaver. Arachnean Weaver hits the last two slots with true damage. So does Life and Death. Um, what's next? 
We got Mang. You got to throw Mang on here. Early game. Can carry you through anything. It can do level 500 factions. It can do anything you need it to do as a beginner. It it'll carry you. Even if you have no good troops, Mang will carry you. Okay, so eliminate all armor from an enemy. Then deal damage. 41 damage. Gain attack equal to armor eliminated. So the higher that... The more difficult something gets, the more armor you're stealing and giving it to your attack. So you could drain... If they have 400 armor, you're going to take it all away and then deal true damage to them. And then you're going to give that... You're going to give all 400 to your attack. So if you're starting with like 100 attack or 80 attack, you're going to end up having 480 attack. So then the next skull you take, bang, you kill them. So you, you cast it on the first enemy. You're stealing all their armor, so now they don't have that. You're hitting them for true damage, so you're getting started on their HP. And then you're giving all that armor and, and placing it where you're on top of your attack. So now you have 480 attack or something. So next skull you take, they're definitely dead because you took away all their armor, you true damaged them, you gained 400 attack, and then you hit, a, hit them with a skull, they're dead. So really good. It can carry you throughout tons of events early game, especially harder scaling stuff. Um, does it have any good tempering? Not really. Create a red gem. But it's really the spell. And it's early game. You don't really use it late game. We have all kinds of other options late game. But early game, it's probably one of the best early game weapons. Um, how do you get it? It is brown and red mastery. So every time you level up, it's going to give you a choice between two colors. You always want to take brown first. And then red is the second best. Reason is because of Mang. Because of Mountain Crusher. Because of stuff like that. Golden Cog. Um... Black Manacles. There's so many weapons that are either brown or red, or have one of those two colors in them. That's why you do those two colors first. You always pick brown first, and then red second. So if it's between yellow and red, you pick red. If it's between brown and green, you take brown. If it's between brown and red, you take brown. So, yeah, and then purple's like third, because you want that Black Manacles and uh, other stuff like that. But Mang, really good early game, can carry you. Number nine. Cannot cannot make a best weapons in the game list without Mountain Crusher. Mountain Crusher. 11. 11 mana cost. So if you start with a 50% start, you're using a class with a 50% start, you only have to get 6 mana. That's matching brown with like a mana surge. Maybe a banner. Maybe, yeah, you can match one brown and Mountain Crusher is up. And then it blows up 39 brown gems, which is the whole freaking board pretty much. It's going to explode the whole board. You're going to get 50% of all that mana that it explodes. Which, it's hitting other colors too. Every brown explodes, all eight gems around that brown are going to blow up too. And you're going to get 50% of their mana. So, it gets you, no matter if you use brown or not, you're still going to get tons of mana. It gives all brown allies two mana. So, you cast it, it blows up a billion gems. And if you're brown, it gives you a plus two more brown. Um, create a dust storm. A brown storm for a brown weapon. Probably on a brown team. That is amazing. So anytime a weapon makes its own storm the same color as it uses, it's pretty good. So extra turns are really good on weapons. Storms that are the same color that they need is good as well. Um, but reason I, it would make this list is the very low mana cost, how easy it is to get, and then it's very effective for how easy it is to get. So I, I recommend this to everybody. If you don't have whatever other weapon I mentioned in a team, you can always use a Mountain Crusher. It's just a brown mastery weapon, like we were just talking about with Mang. That's why you take brown first, just to get Mountain Crusher. Now you have an amazing um, mana generator for your team. Mountain Crusher. You can't make a best weapons in the game list without Mountain Crusher. Norbert's Turnip is really good. It has an extra turn on it. Enough said, right? Deal damage to an enemy boosted by goblin allies. Goblin's one of the best typings in the game. Then create a mix of six green and red gems for each goblin ally. Green and red are used by goblins quite a bit. Think of Gob Truffle, think of Flaming Oni, think of all the goblins. They almost all use green. Slug Hoarder. Some of them use red. Fun Dingus and, and Flaming Oni use red. So just the extra turn. You cast all this, you get all that green and red, you do some damage, and you get an extra turn, which is right here, by the way. So you have to have it fully tempered to get the extra turn. But it's worth doing. Gain an extra turn. Deal 5 damage to the last enemy. Drain 3 mana from the first enemy. 
So, really good weapon. Any weapon with an extra turn, you could probably put it on this list. How do you get Norbert's turn up? Right now, you can get it in the Soul Forge. You have to wait for a Zazian week, and then it costs two or three hundred diamonds in the Soul Forge. And maybe uh, some brown and yellow jewels. Um, so, definitely get it this week. Don't leave this week without it. It's good, especially with goblins. Osha's Tome. Super good weapon. Explode four gems for each blue ally and each elemental ally. So this thing blows up so many gems, it's crazy. A lot of elementals are blue, so you're going to have both of that. Most of the time when you're using a full team of elementals, you're going to have three or four blue troops on your team. On top of that, it creates an ice storm, so you're seeing a theme here. This weapon uses blue, and it makes a blue storm. It boosts off of blue, other troops on your team are going to be blue. Now you have a blue storm. You're blowing up a ton, then a bunch of blue is going to fall on a blue team. That's boosting off of blue. Deal 5 scatter damage. Submerge myself. That's doing other stuff as well. Oh, it's just tome. Really good. There's other weapons like it, but it's one of the best ones out of those type of weapons. Plunder and Peril slash Skeleton Key. Gold farming weapons. They jumped off the page at me. It's like, I have to. If I'm not going to put the soul farming weapon phylactery on this list, I got to at least put the gold farming weapon on there. I just don't think soul farming is very important anymore, but... um. You know, gold farming got booty gems right now. We just got slug hoarder. So gold farming is making a, a little bit of a comeback, even though I still recommend just doing the vault event for your gold. You can get 250,000 gold off of just one vault key. So definitely recommend just going super hard in the vault for your gold farming. We're having vaults more often now. Um, yeah, but still, shout out to this weapon. Shout out to Skeleton Key, the best gold farming um, weapons in the game. Right now they're hitting pretty hard too because of uh, the extra gold we're getting from the booty gems and stuff like that. So deal damage to two random enemies boosted by my gold and the enemy's gold. Plunder and Peril. You get that from Corsair class. So you equip Corsair, you get 250 victories, you get it for free. Another free weapon. It has gain 10 gold, bleed the first enemy, deal 5 damage to the last enemy, submerge myself. So pretty decent. The combo of that and the skeleton key make it makes it make the list. Next up is Reflection of Good. Uh, reflection of Good. Grant all status effects to an ally, then explode 21 gems of their mana color. So it's the Uno Reverso of the Essence of Evil. It's um, it's the Arch Magus weapon. So equip. It's so it's free. So you got to kind of give it extra credit. It ends up making the list because it's free. You all you have to do is put in a little bit of effort. It doesn't cost any gems. Doesn't cost any diamonds. You don't have to wait until a certain week. You can get it right now. All you have to do is equip Arch Magus and uh, win 250 victories. So if anybody's out there saying why did Reflection of Good make it and not this other weapon, well that other weapon was through a campaign and now you got to wait a whole year. So it was super close. So I went with Reflection of Good because it's free and you can get it right now for no gems, no diamonds, no waiting around. You can go get it right now for free. So grant all status effects to an ally, then explode 21 gems of their mana color. So that includes barrier, enchant, all that stuff. Give all allies to life. Silence the first enemy. Silence is strong. Give one mana to all allies. Drain three mana from the first enemy. So it's really good. Reflection of good. That would be like, let's say there's a ton of brown on your team, and you don't, and you just need something in first slot that's brown, that's a troop, and then um, you want a different color weapon. That way it'll get up. Like reflection of good. Maybe you don't have any purple on your team yet, and you're looking for an explodey weapon, and for some reason you can't use essence of evil or mountain crusher. Well, reflection of good is pretty good in that case. You cast it on your first troop, so you can barrier them. You know, or whatever you want. If you have a troop that hits really hard, if you want to get up their spell up, cast on them so they can get enchanted. Um, so most of the time you use it either for barrier or enchant. Or it'll clear, um, if you cast it on one of your troops and they're, um, they got entangle or silence or something, you can clear that. So it does um, like a bless. It's really, really good. Reflection of good. It's rope dart. Eliminate all armor from an enemy and deal 48 damage, then pull them to first position. So once again, all their armor goes bye-bye, no matter how much they have. They could have 1,000 armor. You cast Rope Dart, bye-bye 1,000 armor. Then you do true damage, because you eliminated all their armor, and then you did damage. So that's true damage. Then you pull them to first position, but that's not all. It's not just a true damage weapon. It's not just to eliminate all their armor and hit them. 
It's not just that. It has an extra turn on it. It destroys three random red gems. And entangles the first enemy. So, pretty cool. Um, usually used with like a Skull Spam team. But also used with Ubastet. And stuff you want to knock into range so you can get instant kills. So it's useful in like two different... A lot of weapons are only useful for like one kind of team. Rope Dart's useful for two or three different kinds of teams. Skull teams, you're hitting something that's very dangerous on the enemy's team. You're bringing it to the front so you can then hit it with skulls. You also eliminated all of its armor and hit it for true damage. So it's pretty similar to whatever weapon we were talking about earlier, like Mang, I think. Um, where you're eliminating all their armor and then doing some damage. And then hit them with skulls, they're dead. It's kind of similar to that, but even better because it has an extra turn on it. So... If you see a really dangerous enemy that's giving you trouble, you target them with the rope dart, you knock all their armor off, you hit them for true damage, you pull them to the front, you um, entangle them, you know, and then you hit them with skulls and they're dead. Or you use it on like a Ubastet team, you knock something, you hit it so hard that it's only got so much HP left, and then you hit it with Ubastet, Ubastet kills him, and then he gets another kill because he gets instant kills when he gets a kill. So, really good weapon. One of the best in the game. Definitely top three rope dart. You should always get this one when you see it. It's a Pride Lands weapon, so you have to wait till Pride Lands comes around. We just had Pride Lands, I think, a few weeks ago, so you should have got it then. It's like 300 diamonds in the Soul Forge when it's a Pride Lands week. Shield of Urskaya. Give an ally 41 armor, boosted by all enemy attack, then enrage and barrier them. So, some stuff in the game boosts off of armor. This thing gives them a ton of armor, and then they hit harder. So, Guards, Avatar, Tesla, Rowan. Three really good troops. So, if, there were, if it wasn't for those three troops, this weapon would not make the list. But it's making this list because three of the best troops in the game get boosted by this weapon and then clear in one shot, pretty much. So, it has to be on the list because of the troops that it supplements. Um, and it enrages and barriers the thing as well which is cool um it's got anything else on it stun the first enemy bless myself give one mana to all allies barrier myself so it's barrier doing barrier to multiple if you target something else with it which you normally will you're going to cast it on rowan or you want to cast it on tesla or on guards avatar depends if they boost off of their armor or the whole team's armor or whatever if they boost off their armor you cast it on them if they boost off of all the whole team's armor you can cast it on yourself but Imagine you cast it on Rowan, right? You're going to barrier yourself, the hero, and then barrier Rowan as well. So now that Rowan's armor can't get knocked off, so it'll still hit just as hard. And Shield of Our Sky is probably in first slot, getting a barrier too, you know? And it's giving one mana to all allies, blessing itself, stunning the first enemy. It's a really good weapon. You can't tell me it doesn't belong on this list because of Rowan, Guards Avatar, and Tesla. That's why. All right, last one, and the newest weapon... Wand of Stars. Angel, I think this is your answer. So, Wand of Stars. If I was going to pick one weapon and put it on every single team, it would probably be Wand of Stars. And you asked that in your question. What's the best weapon, in your opinion, to use in the game anytime you can? Wand of Stars. Because it uses every single color. You can't go wrong. No matter what you put in front of it, it's always going to catch some sort of color. Choose one, create six elemental stars, bless all allies, or create seven umbral stars and curse all enemies. So bless all allies, that'll get rid of all negative status effects, and you can't get, an, get one until you cast. Um, create six elemental stars that almost always, it, it gets an extra turn a lot of the time, but it, it's at least going to get something up on your team. That's a lot of mana. That's enough elemental stars to make stuff shake on the board. Create seven Umbral Stars. That's okay. Umbral Stars are only purple and yellow, so it's harder to match them. But it curses all enemies, so that's helpful for High King Iron Gut, for anything that needs to be able to apply something or devour. So you got a curse option, a bless option, with tons of mana generation with the elemental stars. On top of that, it cleanses itself. It gives one mana to all allies. It gains ten gold. It's a really good weapon, and the answer to your question is Wand of Stars. So, yeah. That is the top 15 weapons in the game with a bonus weapon, so 16 weapons. Technically, I guess it was like 18. I probably could have made it a top 20, but I went with top 15. 
those are the top 15 weapons in the game. You should definitely, anytime you see these weapons, you should grab them and never pass them up. These will be the 15 to 16 weapons that if you see them in the Soul Forge, I'll say you cannot leave this week without. Some of them are class weapons. You can just go get for free right now. You should go do that. And yeah, some of them are faction weapons where you have to kind of wait until the faction event um, to then buy them with gems in the shop. But yeah, you're going to be doing the event anyway. You might as well buy up to it. Another ones are mastery weapons. You get super early in the game, like Mang and, and Mountain Crusher. You should already have those. Anybody watching this video should already have Mang and Mountain Crusher. But yeah, they're all pretty easy to get, except for the ones like Rope Dart, where you have to wait until it's a certain kingdom and then buy it, get it in the Soul Forge. Uh, but yeah, that is my top 15 weapons in the game. Thank you to Angel for becoming a Puppet Master. 999 Tier 3. Shout out to you. And if anybody else wants to uh, join up, uh, hit that join button. There should be a link in the description as well if you can't find the join button. You can become a puppet master as well, and you can do this too, and I'll make a video just for you. No matter what it is, as long as it's uh, Gems of War or EverQuest or Elden Ring or something that I can actually do, I will do a video for you. Even if it's just, say, like, hey, do a, a live stream, or hey, try this team, or like this one, hey, what are the best weapons? Something like that. Like, share, subscribe. Consider joining helps a lot. Tell your good about the channel cop below. And I'll see y'all next time. Peace.